For the first time ever, or at least since official tallying began, the U.S. economy has started and ended an entire decade without entering a recession. That means this economic expansion is now older than the iPad, Instagram, and the Tesla Model S. From the end of 2009 to the end of 2019, the U.S. economy has added more than 20 million jobs. We have launched an economic boom, the likes of which we have never seen before. It's been the longest economic expansion in the country's history, taking place in a decade marked by the memory of the Great Recession and by unprecedented access to information about the state of the economy. Both consumers have been more cautious and businesses have also become more cautious, simply out of fear that we might experience something similar to what we saw 10 years ago. But just because it's the longest expansion doesn't necessarily mean it's the strongest. Overall economic growth over the past decade has been slower compared to previous booms, and not everyone is reaping the benefits Benefits. Today in America, you got three people owning more wealth than the bottom half of America. So how did the U.S. get through this historic decade? And will it last? The simplest explanation for how the U.S. economy has avoided a recession during this decade is that it was coming from a very low point at the end of the last decade. As some economists have put it, the deeper the hole, the longer it takes to climb out. None of us anticipated the full ramifications and extent of the crisis. The economic picture from 2007 to 2009 was so gloomy, it's called the Great Recession. Many experts define a recession as two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. GDP, or gross domestic product, is one metric to gauge the overall health of the economy. In the U.S., a nonprofit organization called the National Bureau of Economic Research, or NBER, decides if the economy has entered a recession. The NBER takes into account GDP and a wider range of measures, like income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale retail sales. U.S. government agencies like the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve go by the NBER's definition of a recession. The most recent recession, according to NBER's definition, was the Great Recession. From 2007 to 2009, U.S. GDP fell 4.3 percent, the unemployment rate doubled from 5 percent to 10 percent, and house prices and stock markets crashed. People were hit essentially both in terms of losing their jobs, and a lot of people were also hit very significantly in terms of losing their homes and home prices going down and the stock market going down. The only other time the economy was in worse shape? During the Great Depression in the 1930s. A stock market crash and a series of banking panics put an end to the economic boom of the Roaring Twenties. Millions of Americans lost their jobs and livelihoods as the downturn lasted an entire decade. In the Great Depression of the 1930s, unemployment peaked at almost 25 percent. There were booms and busts in every decade after World War II, but one notable thing started to happen. Economic expansions lasted longer. The period from the mid-1980s to 2007 became known as the Great Moderation. Prices remained stable, and while there were occasional dips, on the whole, the economy chugged along. One reason for this is that officials at the Federal Reserve got more effective at responding to changes in the economy. And because inflation was steady, policymakers could act aggressively when the next crisis came along. When the Great Recession hit, policymakers in D.C. took unprecedented steps to try to get the economy back on track. Their actions resulted in trillions of dollars of economic stimulus. A very important reason why the U.S. has had such a long and very protracted expansion uh, is that U.S. Fiscal policy and monetary policy, meaning the Federal Reserve and politicians were much more quick out of the box in terms of supporting the economy. In 2008, Congress authorized the Treasury Department to invest hundreds of billions of dollars to try to revitalize the country's ailing financial and auto sectors as part of the Troubled Asset Relief Program, otherwise known as TARP. A year later, in 2009, President Obama signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. The law pumped hundreds of billions of dollars into areas like infrastructure and clean energy. The biggest stimulus effort was underway in another part of Washington, at the Federal Reserve. By the end of 2008, the central bank had already lowered its key interest rate to essentially zero, so it undertook an unusual effort called quantitative easing, or QE. David Wilcox worked at the Federal Reserve Board during the crisis in the Division of Research and Statistics. Well, the Fed was able to come in, purchase about $4 trillion worth of securities, drive up their price, 
and therefore bring down the interest rate at which businesses were able to borrow, households were able to take out a mortgage. Do you think that, that those QE efforts helped the economy recover and get to the point where it is today? There's no question in my mind and there's no question in any of the academic literature that absent those steps you would have had an implosion of the economy, uh, the likes of which we hadn't seen since the 1930s. The Fed has kept borrowing rates low throughout the decade, gradually raising them at the end of 2015 through 2018, and then quickly cutting again in 2019 to try to fend off any instability in the economy. This past decade has been characterized by very low interest rates and generally fiscal stimulus. That means lower taxes, higher government spending. In December 2017, President Trump signed into law the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which slashed corporate tax rates for American companies. The effect was a boost to GDP at the start of 2018. Regulation rollbacks by the Trump administration have also cut down some costs for businesses. There's no denying the American economy is in better shape at the end of this decade than the last. As of December 2019, it expanded for a record 126 straight months while the unemployment rate was near its lowest level in 50 years. Even though the last 10 years brought the longest expansion ever in the U.S., it hasn't exactly been an economic boom by historical standards. Many Americans still feel left behind, and this decade has been marked as much by the growing economy as increasing inequality. There are pockets of the country and, and important groups of individuals, communities, families, households, who still are not enjoying uh, anything that they would describe as economic prosperity. GDP growth during this recovery has been slower than in previous economic expansions. Some investors point to many recessions over the past 10 years, where GDP growth has just barely exceeded 0%. We've had a number of mini cycles within this expansion, but generally speaking, if you look at GDP over the last 10 years, it has really, and it looks just amazing, been 2% for a very, very long time, so it has been relatively flat. The memory of the financial crisis has made consumers and businesses more cautious about spending money and more attuned to the next recession. Unlike in previous decades, the internet has given consumers access to the latest news and economic indicators, potentially making them hyper aware of any changes in the economy. I think because there was so many things that we all missed in the financial crisis, both before and when it was going on in terms of the speed of the slowdown. I do think that both the press and consumers and the Federal Reserve and us in financial markets are basically much more alert to what's going on. That caution has meant there aren't imbalances in the financial system, which has helped the recovery go on for longer. Typically, expansions end because they overheat. What I mean by that is the economy is rip-roaring, booming, you know, you see a lot of construction, overbuilding, you see a lot of borrowing, high leverage, you see a lot of speculation in markets. But in this expansion, we never really got going. We don't have that overbuilding problem. We don't have over leverage in general. But some of the steps policymakers took during the crisis have only made inequality worse. The one glaring blemish is uh, the gap between the haves uh, and the have-nots. Look no further than the stock market. U.S. markets are near record highs, but many Americans have missed out on the bull run. By one estimate, the wealthiest 10% of Americans own more than 80% of the stock market's wealth. As the stock market rises, uh, you know, that disbenefits that, you know, the top 20% and really the top 10% and really the top 1% and really the top one-tenth of 1%. So the wealth distribution has gotten much more skewed. The other thing that's happened is home ownership rates have declined, right? So home ownership was key to the wealth of middle income Americans. That obviously got creamed in the financial crisis and the housing bust. And so home ownership rate today is meaningfully lower than it was when it peaked 10, 15 years ago. And that means that middle income Americans just haven't been able to build wealth. Economists like to say expansions don't die of old age, meaning there's no time limit for how long a period of growth can happen but there are still warning signals that could be pointing to the next recession. Record low interest rates have fueled record high debt levels. Some economists and investors fear U.S. public debt, which totals more than $23 trillion, is the next ticking time bomb. That debt is only set to go up in the next decades as America's population gets older. And if interest rates go up, it will be even harder for the government to pay off. A lot of discussions whether the expansion can continue or not is all about 
Are we vulnerable in the expansion because of student debt being so high? Are we vulnerable in the expansion because of corporate debt being so high? Political and trade uncertainty are also creating unease about the future health of the economy as the U.S. enters a new decade. The trade war, that could really screw things up. Businesses are very nervous, particularly larger businesses with multinational operations. Others look to technical indicators like the yield curve, which has been flashing recession signals. We know there will be a next recession. We just don't know when it will be. We don't know whether it will be six months from now, a year from now, or three years from now. We haven't seen the last economic recession in, in U.S. history. But maybe as the chairman of the Fed has said, there can't be a bust when there hasn't been a boom in the first place. What we've seen is three of the four longest business cycles in U.S. recorded history have been quite recent. So we're seeing that. And um, I, I, if you look at, today's, look at today's economy, there's nothing that's really booming that would, that would want to bust, in other words. It's a pretty sustainable picture.